Greetings, Masandawana. Greetings, football lovers. We are back with another installment of the Yellow Corner. And no, Masandawana, this is not uh, the season preview. It's way too early for the season preview. That will come later on in the month of July or early uh, August, uh, depending on when the DSTV Premier League season resumes. But yeah, man, uh, we decided to give you guys a special. And as you can see, alongside me, I'm joined by a top Algerian a, a journalist in Mahir Mizahi, man. Uh, you can find him on African Five Aside Football Podcast, which is brought to you by uh, Africa is a country, uh, dot com. Mahir, how are you, my brother? I'm doing very well. It's uh, very hot and humid in Algiers, but I think in South Africa, it's the opposite, no? It's the beginning of winter. It, it is the opposite. Yeah. <laughs> it is a total, total opposite. Yeah, in the last two days, it has totally turned. It's really, mm. really cold. So I wish I could swap with you right now, man. Eh? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, the heat here uh, is, it, it can be annoying too. It can be very humid. So you go downstairs to go buy something from the shop and by the time you're back up, you need to take a shower because you sweat too much, you know. So, but at the oh, same wow. time, I prefer this weather to to the the snow or to any kind of cold uh, that we can get in other places on the continent. We are the same. I prefer the heat than uh, being yeah. cold, man. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. And uh, like I said, guys, this is a Kev Champions League special. I mean, we had a good, a very good season as Manuel Sundowns Football Club last season. We won the DSTV Premiership for the seventh time in a row. We were the inaugural winners of the African Football League. But unfortunately, uh, we once again failed to go over the line in the CAF Champions League. So hence, I decided to bring a top African journalist to help me understand as to why we're struggling to go over uh, the line, man. And here's where I would like to uh, start my hair, man. Uh, last week here in South Africa on Power FM, Coach Hulani was interviewed and he said something very, very, that I found very, very interesting. I will quote him. He said, the, the AFL was a major, major objective for us. In fact, it was our number one objective. From the club and from the club hierarchy, from the club and the hierarchy of the club, we made it clear that this is the trophy we are going for. And I found that really, really interesting because I think, uh, you obviously, when you prioritize uh, as a club, you say continentally, the CAF Champions League is a must for a club like Sundowns. It should be your number one priority. Locally, you say you the league should be the priority and everything else, I assume, should be a, a, a bonus. You know, I think everyone wants to win the AFL because of the uh, financial muscle it brings with. But I think the CAF Champions League prestige far outweighs the financial benefits of the the, 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 the AFL. Your thoughts on that statement? No, 100% agree with the, the final point that you made. Um, it makes wow. sense from a financial perspective, if you're looking to balance the books, to try and mm -hmm. outline the AFL as a more important competition, because I think the prize money is double, if not almost triple, uh, the prize mm -hmm. money of the African Champions League. However, um, we don't really know if the AFL is here to stay. Uh, we don't know what it's going to look like. It has no historical basis on the continent. Whereas with the Champions League, you know, this used to be called the Kwame Nkrumah Cup. It was, uh, you know, a competition started by, you know, some of the greatest African men uh, in our history. This was something that brought together the entire continent back from the 1960s. Um, there's more prestige. There's more importance, I think, to this competition. Um, you know, it, it's there are always there are always going to be competitions that pop in and out in, in Algeria. Sometimes there's, they play something called the Arab Champions Cup, which is like an Arab Champions League. But they'll play for two years and then it'll be dormant for another eight years and then they'll play for another two years, even though the prize money is much higher than the CAF Champions League again. So these competitions, they, they flit in and out of existence. Um, they're nice to play in because, you know, you can use different players in your squad. Um I think for Sundowns, what was particularly important during their run in the AFL was the line of opponents that they played against. Petro and then We Dead and then, uh, what was it? I'm drawing a blank in the final. Was it Al Ahli? No. no, we played Ali in the semi final. We played. Uh, yeah, semi final. Then I think we it was Pedro. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So just the, the line of those opponents, that, which had success against Sundowns in the Champions League, to line them up and then 
beat them in the African Football League, I thought was probably very important for Sundowns mentally um, in preparation for the upcoming CAF Champions League campaign uh, to prove that they can do it, you know, um, and they did it on, on a very big stage. So it's an important competition. I'm not saying it's not an important competition, but I wouldn't put it at the level of the CAF Champions League uh, personally. Yeah, man, I think yeah, we, we share the same sentiments uh, uh, on that, man. Uh, you know, sometimes um, as supporters of the club, you, you, you are, we are blinded by the love that we have for the club, you know. Uh, and I think getting an opinion from someone uh, who's in the outside uh, will help us, uh, uh, you know. Are we as good as we think we are as Mamelodi Sundowns Football Club? And where do we rank amongst the big boys of uh, the African continent currently? Yeah, well, I'll start with the second question. I think it's quite clear that Sundowns are a top four club in Africa. If you look at the results of the CAF Champions League over the last five, six years, you'll see that there are always four clubs practically that are in that final four. Mm -hmm. You have Sundowns, you have Wydad Casablanca, you have Esperanza Tunis, and you have Al Ahli. Now, sometimes, like uh, this year, for example, Wydad Casablanca had a down year, and you'll have Mozambique that steps in, or you'll have another club that, that's sort of interchangeable. But those four clubs, by and large, have been the most consistent in getting to the final four of the CAF Champions League over the last few years. And I think rightfully so, they're the clubs that are going to be representing the African continent uh, at the Club World Cup. So we can comfortably say that Sundowns are a top four club in Africa, by far the greatest club outside of North Africa at the moment. Um, are you as good as you think you are? <laughs> That's a very good question, actually. Um, I can tell you one thing. When I was in Tunis for the CAF Champions League final this year uh, between Esperanza Tunis and Al Ahli, I was speaking to Egyptian supporters and I asked them, you know, Esperanza Tunis won both legs, home and away against Sundowns. Uh -huh. um, who would you have preferred to play, Sundowns or Esperance? And unanimously, without a doubt, they said we would have preferred to play Esperance as it is now. We would not want to play Sundowns. Um, <laughs> they, they have a fear of Sundowns, uh, Al Ahli do, um, that I don't think is uh, befitting of a club like Al Ahli to fear anybody. Um, mm -hmm. So there are times like that when I think, oh, wow, Sundowns have really arrived and they've really made it you know, to, to the very top. And there are other times when I spoke to supporters of Esperance, they would... They were almost downplaying the results at Loftus and the results against, you know, at Sundowns in, in Radis. They were saying, ah, yeah, we beat them home and away, but they don't really know how to play these kinds of matches anyways. It was almost an expectation mm. for them. So there was almost contrast where Al-Ahli supporters were saying, mm. thank God we're not playing them. And Esperal supporters were saying, yeah, but they play pretty football, but they don't really get results when it matters. Um and so I think around the continent, there are different perspectives on what Sundowns is. Without a doubt, everybody agrees they're a top four club. Everybody agrees that they play fantastic football. Where the questions remain, I think, is, is the brand of football that Sundowns play good enough to not only win the Champions League, and I'll add a caveat to that, not just the brand of football or the style of play, but do Sundowns as a club, do they have the, a collective mentality to win these big matches on the African continent once you start getting to the semifinals and the finals of the Champions League? Mm -hmm. No, no, that's true, eh? Uh, that's true, man. Uh, I think the one thing that uh, uh, brought us here is me f wanting to find out what's stopping us from winning it. So my next question is, what does it take to win the Champions League? What is it that we are doing wrong, you know? Uh, because in one of your podcasts, you said something. Uh, you said you mentioned the mental block when it comes to our exit in the Champions League. You mentioned the atmosphere by the fans and uh, the players failing to handle uh, the pressure. You know, how do we fix this? Yeah, it's a that's a really good question. Um, first of all, to win the Champions League, you need quality, quality of players. Yeah. I don't think anybody can doubt that Sundowns have the right amount of quality uh, to win the Champions League. Um, El Ahli have the quality. Now, so let's put the quality of the player aside. The quality of the coaching. Again, I think Sundowns are at the very top of the continent alongside, you know, coaches uh, like Marcel Kohler of El Ahli. And even this year, I was very impressed with Miguel Cardozo of Esperanza Tunis. A different style yeah, of play yeah. to Sundowns, but the way he was uh, setting them up defensively, they were very, very difficult to break down. Now, what... 
are other ingredients that lead to victory. You know, in Africa, we play home and away legs in the final, you know, of the Champions League. Mm -hmm. And home and away in Africa is much more difficult than home and away in Europe, where it's maybe a one-hour train ride or a one-hour flight yeah. uh, in comfortable hotels, first class. You can charter your own flight. We know how it is on our continent, where you always have to take, you know, one or two layovers. The, the distance traveled is absolutely massive. Uh, sometimes, you know, the quality of the accommodation or the quality of the playing surfaces is not up to standard. And so when you're playing, all of these things, they sap some of your energy when you're playing away from home at times, you know. And sometimes these things are deliberately done by host clubs. They, they deliberately make the traveling conditions difficult. Uh, I believe South African national team against Rwanda very recently had a very, very difficult uh, away trip, 1-0, uh, I believe, a few, a few months ago. And they can tell you about how difficult that was and how that sapped some of your energy. And as a result, I just wonder if Sundowns can play the style of football that they can away from home effectively and win the competition. I think somebody like Olani McQuen is a genius. I think he's somebody that's not stubborn, but somebody that absolutely believes in his philosophy and the way he wants to play football. And so he's going to sort of win or die trying. Um, and that's fine. But I do wonder about, you know, like the way that, for example, Sundowns conceded a goal against Esperance de Tunis at Loftus from a goal kick, a flick on, yeah. and then the right back runs onto it and smashes the ball into the corner. It was three touches. Three touches, and yeah. I, yeah. And I'm thinking to myself, you do all of that effort in terms of, you know, instituting a, a press, a counter press, uh, monopolizing football, uh, you know, using inverted fullbacks, all these tactical, you know, methods that are very complicated, that require a lot of time on the training session, uh, that look very nice and very pretty or very tactically advanced, very impressive. But then the simple things sometimes that's where Sundowns have seemed to fail. So style of play is one. And then the other intangibles for me is, yeah, foot, like playing at home. When I was at Esperanza Tunis for the final, that was like a real atmosphere, a real intimidating atmosphere. One week later, El Ahli, who, you know, for a very long period of time, were not allowed to play in front of a full capacity stadium due to political reasons in Egypt. Now they're back to... 90,000 in Cairo International Stadium. That was a real atmosphere. Um, you know, when you travel to, even, even if you go to Lubumbashi in Tipe Mezambe and you have, you know, all those supporters really close to the pitch, there's no running track. Uh, they can almost reach out and punch you in the face if they wanted to. Um, that's a very intimidating atmosphere. I thought at Loftus, at times this year, it's been very, very good. But overall, I would say that amongst some of the biggest clubs on the African continent, uh, Sundowns probably have the least amount of intimidation factor uh, when you go uh, and play there. Um, it feels like much more of a um, relaxed atmosphere than some of the other clubs, uh, especially not in Casablanca. Casablanca is the best atmosphere I I've witnessed in the African continent. So these are the little things. We I call them intangibles off of the pitch, you know, uh, mentality, experience, uh, um, mental mistakes, and then things like the atmosphere off the pitch. I think Sundowns, these are ways that Sundown supporters and could definitely add to increasing the chances of Sundowns winning a CAF Champions League. It's not impossible to win without these things, but it, it helps a lot uh, if you can have them present. Yeah, man, uh, I, I, I fully agree with you, you know, uh, especially when it comes to hostility. I think... We, we've got a very good fan base that supports the the, 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 the club, you know, throughout, you know, uh, even after a defeat, we uh, wait for the players to come and we sing for them, cheer them, you know, show them that we are in sol solidarity with them, you know, but we like that. Uh, and Coach Ulan doesn't like uh, this word, the dark arts, you know, we, we, we I think we like the dark arts of uh, uh, to win uh, this uh, tournament, you know, uh, uh, make it you know, when, when, when experience came for the second leg, uh, they made it an atmosphere. It was not a huge uh, number of them, but they made an, made it an atmosphere in and around the streets of Hartfield, you know, with uh, flares, you know. Uh, it was a proper, proper at, uh, Champions League atmosphere. Whereas with us, we, we, we lack that hostility, you know. Uh, so I think going forward, we need to, 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 to do that, you know, like uh, 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 you said, you know. 
And you you mentioned something. Uh, just, oh, you, you can you can cut in if you want to. Yeah, sorry, Tibi. So just a quick point. I just wonder. And excuse me. There's a wedding in the neighborhood, so there's fireworks going off. Um, just a quick one. I wonder if that comes from. Does that have to come from supporters, or does that win at all cost mentality? Can it also come from the coach? You know, I know the coach. I I, I always talk about him, and it almost seems like I'm critical of him, which I don't mean to be, because in my opinion, he's one of the. He is probably the best coach on the African continent. I have a lot of high hopes for him when, you know, I expect him, you know, one day to make the jump and coach in Europe. And I expect him to be somebody that we as Africans can all be proud of because I think he's that smart and I think he's that talented. But when this year during the CAF Champions League, when he came out and he said, it's not an obsession for me to win the CAF Champions League. Yeah. There was something that in my head went like, oh, <laughs> and that's probably a healthy thing. You know, personally, you know, you don't want football to ruin your life. You know, like Jose Mourinho was always saying like, Pressure, pressure is kids starving uh, because they don't have enough to eat. This my football match is not pressure. You know that's what Jose Mourinho used to always say. And so I can understand on one hand, but when I when I when I'm in, amongst the Al Ahli supporters and the Esperance supporters, uh, they're I'm not I'm exaggerating a little bit here, but they're ready to to make their players and the board members pay almost physically <laughs> if they put in a bad or a lazy result there's so much pressure there is absolutely an obsession at those clubs to win the competition a win at all cost mentality that i'm not sure exists at sundowns yet and again per personally that's probably a healthy thing you know you don't want football to take over your entire life but it also reflects in the trophy cabinet after yeah no no i fully fully agree with you man yeah and uh, you, you you actually right there the, the mentality uh, there, there needs to be a, a change in mentality from the playing staff uh, and to, to, to the fan base as well. And speaking of Coach Ulani, man, you've had a lot of positive things uh, to say about Coach, Coach Ulani. Uh, uh, I've heard you talk highly of him in your podcast. Man. And in the, after the semi final second leg, after we lost to Experience uh, at Loftus, man, you said, uh, I'll quote you, you said, uh, my question has always been about the intangibles. My questions were always about, does he know how to win? I know he knows how to coach teams, uh, how to have more possession of the ball, but does he know how to manipulate the little intricacies of football and convert that to into winning football matches? Football idealism versus football realism. Can Coach Hulani win the Champions League with Sundowns? Oh, absolutely he can. Like, I don't think Sundowns were very far, uh, especially last year when they lost to We Dead. I thought that was the year, really, But um, as, as yeah. we had spoken about very briefly. But I don't think Sundowns are very far. Sometimes those final inches seem like kilometers, which is the case for Sundowns at the moment. But trust me, around the continent, everybody expects Sundowns to get grab one of these titles sooner rather than later. It's also been unfortunate in that they've... Uh, stumbled upon an Al-Ahli side as well, even though they haven't lost to them directly, but Al-Ahli have completely dominated. And this has been actually uh, the most dominant Al-Ahli side since mm -hmm. 2006 to 2010, if not more dominant. If you look at you know their results in the Club World Cup, if you look at um, their results in the Egyptian Premier League, if you look at the results in the Champions League, five consecutive finals, um, winning four out of those, it's absolutely incredible what they've That's been able crazy. to do. That said, I do feel like Al Ahli are going to be changing a lot this summer. There's going to be a lot of players, whether it's Mohamed Shinawi, the goalkeeper, Ali Ma'loud, the left back. This was really the, the final hurrah of a golden generation for Al Ahli. So things can change there. Uh, Esperanza Tunis, we're not sure if Miguel Cardozo is going to continue with them into the new year. Uh, we don't know what their team is going to look like next year. Are they going to be as defensive or not? Uh, we did, apparently, is. is I don't, I don't know if I don't want to say they're broken, but they didn't even finish top three in the Butola in Morocco this yeah. year. It's going to be Raja there. Um, so that could be another dragon slate. So perhaps there's a little bit of, of a window of opportunity or a door of an opportunity next year for Sundowns. And they're not too far away. But what, what I meant during that passage, and thank you for quoting it, I, thinking back on it, I said, wow, that's, I was actually pretty happy with that. I think that's spot on. Is <laughs> you know the the match against we did last year in the semifinal. I remember Sundowns, you know, really taking it to them. And then, if I'm not mistaken, it was a Ronwen Williams sort of flimsy goal that he conceded the first one, and the second one was Mvala with an own goal. 
And I'm thinking again, and, same and thing. Sorry the, to interject. Yeah. The, that yeah. goal, the second one, it came from a very silly free kick, an unnecessary free kick because the early uh, uh, player was facing the crowd, and Bule didn't need to make that foul. To be honest, you know, and yeah, man. And the thing is, I, I spoke to Coach Mokwena for a piece on Al Jazeera English uh, prior to the first leg in Casablanca. And I asked him, you know, about these things. How do you prepare for going to play in an atmosphere like that? Mentally, especially, how do you prepare your players? And he was talking about, you know, pumping in crowd noise with speakers, um, doing all different kinds of different methods to mentally prepare his players to go play in an atmosphere like that. And I thought, oh, he gets it. He understands. Um, but the, the truth is, me and you, Tabiso, we cannot make a judgment on if Coach Mokwena is sufficiently preparing his players mentally for these matches because we're not on the training ground. We don't see how he speaks mm. to them. We don't know, like, really what's going on over there. Um, but coaches understand, all coaches understand, that in the end, the buck stops with them. They are responsible for everything that happens on the pitch, good or bad. Um, and so as that's, how, that's the way I see football anyways. And so as a result, he is responsible. Even if he's coaching it, uh, he needs to find a way to coach it even more. He needs to find, maybe he needs to bring in another player uh, who's mentally stronger. But the buck stops with him. He is responsible for it. So I think he's making efforts. He's trying to find solutions to these to these issues. Um, but he hasn't been able to find it yet. And as a result, that is not a stain, but that is a, a valid criticism that we can have uh, for Coach Mokwena. And, and like I said, we love Coach Mokwena. But we're, he, uh, eventually, he's going to be judged on this. Can he turn it around in the African Champions League? I think that's going to be his defining legacy at Sundowns. I really, really hope he does win the Ch Champions League, man. I'm a huge uh, uh, Rulani Mukwena fan, man. Uh, I wouldn't swap him for any other coach uh, at, at, at Sundowns. I mean, I've watched Sundowns play some of the best football that I've ever seen since I started supporting the club. Uh, in 1997, you know, so he, yeah, I really, really hope, man, uh, he doesn't leave, at, or whenever he leaves, he doesn't leave with that question mark or that stain, like you said, of uh, not winning at the Champions League. And I think he, he really is good enough. And I really, really hope uh, he, he, he does uh, turn it around and is able to uh, cross the line, man. Uh, final two questions, man. Take away Ali's uh, aura, you know, the same aura that Real Madrid has in Europe, you know. What is it that Sundowns can learn uh, 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 from Ali? What is it that Ali are doing differently to Sundowns? Because if I'm being honest, Mahir, I've watched Ali, you know, and stylistically, I can't say they play the best football in the continent for me to say, yeah, man, this, is, this team is ex exceptional. They play amazing football. But their football is very, very effective, you know. And it, they get the, the job done, you know. What is it that we can learn from this uh, a great institution? Um, what I would say to be so is that, and this is no disrespect to Mamelodi Sundowns or any other South African club, you know, Al Ahli, what they have is a result of decades and decades and decades and decades of hard work and of win at all cost mentality. It's not something that can be cultivated within five or six or 10 years. Um, it's something that has, you know, it's what they call football DNA. It's what Real Madrid has. Yeah. Real Madrid has been winning Champions League yeah. since the 1950s. And that comes, it's, you know, when you pull on the Real Madrid, you're a new signing, you pull on the Real Madrid shirt, you feel different. You're like, oh, you feel it. now mm. I know. I'm at, yeah, yeah. Like I'm at this club, I cannot make any errors. I know what's expected of me. I know what's expected of this club. Uh, maybe it's not the same thing when you pull on a shirt of Esperanza de Tunis or you pull on a shirt of Wida Casablanca. You say, yeah, this is a really interesting run in the club's history, you know, five, ten years, but it's not like El Ahli. It's not like Real Madrid. You know, it's the difference between a cheap pearl when you buy your wife a necklace or, or a real pearl is that, you know, the cheap pearls, they, they'll they uh, take a little piece, a pebble, a small stone, and they'll insert it into yeah. the uh, oyster and then you know two years later they'll take it out and it, it, you, find, you find a little pearl whereas a real pearl is like a tiny grain of sand that's found naturally and has been you know growing and growing over so many years and now it's you have this beautiful succinct uh you know piece of stone that's one of the most expensive uh jewelry items in the world so that's what it is really it's it's organic i don't think sundowns can try to reach al-ahli in the next two three five 
even 10 years. I think it's more of an adopting a mentality saying, look, how are we going to win every day, today, tomorrow, after tomorrow, next week, next month, next year, and keep that going. And eventually, without you even realizing it, after 15, 20, 30 years, because of the accumulated success, Sundowns will grow and they'll morph and they'll evolve into something else that they aren't today. And that's, again, that's no disrespect to Sundowns. And that's no disrespect to any other club on the continent because Al Ahli are the only club on the continent that have that kind of aura, that have that football DNA. Mm -hmm. And Real Madrid are the only club in Europe, I think, that we can say. Maybe there are others like AC Milan, Liverpool. They have that a little bit. But Al Ahli, to do it so consistently every single decade, as Al, as Al Ahli do, as Real Madrid do, sorry. Um, I think that's the main difference is... Um, I see it in, with the supporters. I ask them, aren't you ever sick of like winning? You know, like, don't you guys get bored? <laughs> and they don't. They say, and, and I promise you, Tabiso, we're sit, I was sitting there with many Al Ahli supporters, you know, the night before the match. We were hanging out in a, in a hotel on a patio, uh, you know, having dinner. And we're just talking about Al Ahli. And I promise you, they were speaking out of one side of their mouth. And on the other, either they had their phones and they're watching Al Ahli handball versus Zamalek, uh, and then somebody else the next day was watching volleyball and basketball. And it's just something where, even if they don't, they're not particularly interested in that sport, They, for them, it's absolutely necessary that their club wins at everything all the time. It's, it's non-negotiable. And that kind of mentality seeps not only from the supporters, but also into the club and also amongst the players. And so I think... That's the thing that, you know, Al Ahli has that Sundown doesn't have. That's not to say Sundowns can't win a Champions League. That's not to say, by the way, and it's not just Sundowns, as I said. It's no other club in South Africa. It's no other club in North Africa. Al Ahli are unique in that aspect, as Real Madrid is. And the only way to really catch them is to be absolutely exceptional every day for an extended period of time. And perhaps one day, uh, hope that uh, some of their ambition lessens and that we can catch them in the future. But it's, 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 it's really, really... Um, almost admirable and at the same time almost unhealthy as i said you know that obsession that that mm -hmm. Fulani almost spoke about and they have that obsession it's inbuilt into their the cells of their you know the mitochondria of their cells it's absolutely in their dna so i think that's the main thing that i really have that no but nobody else has okay final question my uh, i know the club world cup man is a year away you know uh, but how well do you think uh, uh, our uh, football clubs will do in this a uh, new format of uh, 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 the club world cup next year hopefully we'll by that by this time next year i'll be interviewing you and uh, looking looking forward to the club world cup eh? maybe we'll be in america who knows um <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, i think i think it's going to be very interesting to watch and you know it's we can never seriously predict something one year away everything mm -hmm. in football moves so fast one year from now you know it might not be anything like what we can uh, base our predictions off of this year. But I do think that, you know, the Club World Cup, because there is no weight of expectations, because there is no, is no intimidating atmosphere, um, because, you know, uh, teams might not really know Sundowns, might underestimate Sundowns. Um, you know, they might not set up in that low block like Esperance did, you know, and make themselves very difficult to break down. I think Sundowns are going to impress the hell out of the entire world. I think they're going to shock the world. Really, really, I do. Um, you know, it was, was who was the club that was at this most previous World Cup, Club World Cup against City, and they were keeping the ball away from Manchester City. It was a Brazilian club. I think it was Fluminense, but I'm not sure. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. And... The one that's coached by uh, the, the guy who was coaching the Brazilian national team as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think it's Fluminense, but I'm not 100% sure. And the way they were yeah. keeping the ball, I remember on social media, everybody loved watching them. It was like, wow, like. This is great to watch, and it was so impressive. And they event eventually, they lost to City, uh, I think 4-0 or, mm. or something like that. But still, they captured the imagination of everybody else. And I think Sundowns are absolutely going to have that role at the Club World Cup. I think you know, people that aren't familiar with African football are going to watch that and say, whoa, we didn't know that there are clubs in Africa that play this kind of – that are this tactically advanced, that play this brand of football. That's not too dissimilar from what we see in Europe, you know. Uh, I really, really do think Sundowns are going to be the most impressive club out of Africa, and hopefully they have the best results out of any other club in Africa as well. Um, but this extended format, I think, is going to be interesting. I think it's going to give us a more accurate understanding of where we are in the world, because in yeah, the previous yeah. editions, yeah. 
you're you're going up against Man City, you're going up against Real Madrid, you're going up. You know, it's very difficult to beat those clubs, mm. uh, or even the champions of South Africa. But now we have like a top four, a top five in Africa. Let's line them up against you know the top four, top five in in North America, in South America, in Europe, and let's see how you know Sundowns does against uh, those clubs and and how Esperance and Ahi do against those clubs. I think we're going to be pleasantly surprised uh, by the African clubs. At least that's what I hope. Ah, uh, yeah, fully agree with you, man. Uh, yeah, my yeah, man. I, this has been a great pleasure doing this with you, man. I really, really appreciate you taking uh, your time to uh, chat to me, man. And I hope uh, African clubs bring the fireworks that uh, uh, sounded in your background earlier on because of the wedding to the club welcome, <laughs> man. And yeah, man. Uh, guys, please, if after watching this episode and you don't go in and su subscribe to African Fireside podcast on YouTube, I don't know what more you want, man. You you, you want to, to, to learn more about uh, African football, uh, 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 do so, man, and also follow my, my hair on uh, uh, social media. I will drop the link uh, uh, to your podcast on uh, uh, the description, man. And yeah, thank you very much uh, for doing this uh, with me, man. Eh? Thank you, Tabiso, and I hope to see you in Loftus, hopefully, for a match next year. That would be awesome, man. That would be awesome. <laughs> yeah. uh, Masandawana and football lovers across the world, that's another installment of the Olokona. Uh, do continue subscribing and help us grow the channel. The next time you will see us, like I said, will be either towards the end of July for the season uh, preview or early in August. Until then, shop shop Masandawana. Yeah.